Okay, um, yeah, so welcome back. Uh, we are learning about the keys for answered prayer, the steps that we need to take. We said that firstly, we should pray with a clear conscience. Secondly, we have to ask in the name of Jesus. So if we are asking outside of the authority of the name of Jesus, those prayers will not be answered. Now, coming to the third and very important point here is pray according to God's will. Pray according to God's will. So 1 John 5 verses 14 through 15, we've already seen when we ask him, you know, uh, according to his will, he hears us. So we've seen this passage earlier. And when he hears us, it's as good as God answering the prayer. If God is receiving a prayer, that means that he will answer a prayer. If So we need to pray according to the will of God. So understanding his will is what is very key. Again, in John chapter 15, we said how you know we are told to um, abide in the word and the word abides in us. And as we pray from that place of the word abiding in us, we will have our prayers answered. Because what happens when the word is fully within me, I know, you know what God's will about a certain matter is. So I will pray according to the will of God. And therefore, I will have answered prayers. So why do we have a lot of rejects in our praying? Maybe we are not understanding God's will regarding you know, all those prayer points. So when we understand God's will, it's more likely that those prayers will be effective. Or if you want to use terms like successful, answered, so on and so forth. So understand the will of God. Is it possible to know the will of God? Is it possible? I think too, um, you know, about many prayers that fall under this category in general, it is possible. Okay, And also Paul uh, in the book of Colossians, right? He, um, he says this, he prays for the Colossians that, no, you may know the will of God and you may walk according to God's purposes. So he's praying that for the Colossian church. So that only goes to tell us that to the extent that we require here on earth, it is possible for us to know the will of God. So we can know the will of God. How to know the will of God? How to know the will of God? Through his word. Okay. Uh, that's that's correct. So whenever there is, let's say, a request in my mind, I need to know the word of God, you know, uh, regarding that request. Does it fit into, you know, or, or is it in alignment with the word of God? I, I hope that I'm not asking anything outside of the will of God. Right? All other points are in place. Our conscience is clear. We are asking in the name of Jesus. In addition to those things, is this in the will of God or not? So if I pray, let's say, Lord, your kingdom come. I'm using a very broad prayer. Your kingdom come okay, uh, in my life. Um, Lord, you rule and reign in my life. Lord, you know, uh, I surrender my life to you. So these are all prayers which are very much aligned to the will of God, the purpose of God. So immediately I know that, yes, God has heard my prayer. So very broad things that I'm telling you. Even if you say, God, lead me in the path of righteousness. Psalm 23 already says he leads us in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. So God will give me good direction. Holy Spirit will only give me good direction. right? So all these matters... We see in God's word that uh, God's will is revealed. It's just a matter of, if you use the term research, you know, scripture, search the scriptures. What does the Bible say about this? Is it a godly thing or not? Uh, so once you have done that you know, work of searching the scriptures, you come to a place of confidence where you feel, OK, uh, this sounds like this is what God wants. So. Let me go ahead. Let me uh, pray for this. 
so that is how we pray in the will of god first is we have to understand the will of god the way paul prayed for the colossians to colossians 1 9 and 10 help me lord to know your will in every area of my life okay then search the scriptures come to a place of understanding and then you begin to pray it now is it possible that there are certain um you know decisions or aspects which you wouldn't know the specifics about when you're praying i'll i'll give you one example should i buy a white car or a black car which is god's will for me same model which car shall i buy what if i buy black and it's not god's will and if i buy or you know the other way around how do i know which one to buy i'm giving you a very silly example but you get what i'm saying so sometimes there are these specifics or in practical life you have job offers from two very good companies microsoft um you know facebook which one to choose both have similar pay packages you know all the benefits and i am going to anyway you know excel in my career whether i take one or the other which one shall i choose god's word says okay you know uh, uh whatever you find work with all diligence so broadly both are fitting in the word of god but which company to choose what do you think in these matters where there are these specifics where you i cannot tell you okay turn to genesis chapter 3 a verse whatever that will tell you which company to choose there's no scripture and verse how do you find out will of god how would you pray in such a situation okay ask god to give us a sign okay all right okay so right so all of you have the answer actually you're just not able to like put it together basically the leading of the holy spirit okay because the holy spirit doesn't like holy spirit very much works in line with the word of god so he will prompt you according to god's will let's say both the companies are good for you but as i pray okay first corinthians chapter um wait i'll tell you the passage first corinthians chapter 2 verses 9 through 9 and 10 and then verse 16 basically what it says is i has not seen ear has not he- heard you know uh, mind has not conceived the things that god has prepared for those who love him but then later on it goes to tell us but it has been revealed by the holy spirit so there are these unknown things which we have not perceived but the holy spirit has revealed them to us so even those you know you use all these terms the hidden things secret things can i know you know what decision to make it's possible to know so if i'm praying and uh, let's say i'm praying in the spirit i say god you need to show me i might just as nina said come to a place of peace in my heart where god is saying take microsoft why because scriptures tell us god knows the end from the beginning so what is going to happen later uh, to the company what is going to happen later to my my you know career my future god knows the end from the beginning so he knows and there is a re- very good reason why he is leading me in that direction you get it so even by the prompting of the holy spirit the confirmation of the holy spirit we are able to tell what is the will of god we can know we can know now if somebody asks us to explain we may or may not be able to explain are why are you choosing uh, microsoft why can't you choose facebook both are very good companies this and that uh i just know <laughs> sometimes the answer is like that i just know i have to take microsoft 
But why? I can't tell you why. You get what I'm saying? So go by the word of God and the Holy Spirit will work along in line with the word of God. He will not tell us to do anything which is opposite. But sometimes, even if we don't have the specifics in the word, when we pray in the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, we know Holy Spirit will confirm to us, give us the peace and say, go with this. And we just go with that. So that's how you know the will of God. You know the will of God by the word. The word should dwell richly in us. Secondly, by the leading of the Holy Spirit. And once you know these things, you are in a strong place of faith. Then, you know, as uh, uh, it was pointed out to us, we must pray without doubt. So knowing the will of God will bring us to a place of confidence. Okay, you got it? Uh, I mean, there are so many such uh, experiences which uh, I know each of us will have in our own lives. But one very particular experience for me was when I had to do my master's program. Okay. And the same thing happened. It's a, it's a prayer of asking and receiving. Right from when I joined my bachelor's, I was praying, okay, God, show me what should I do, my master's program, uh, show me the way. But in a very unusual way, you know, uh, and after a long period of prayer and waiting, God opened the doors for a certain program. Okay, so I had in this way, whatever I'm teaching you, you know, I have like experienced it and practiced it. So I prayed through in the name of Jesus. I asked God, Lord, give me this course, this and that. But I had a couple of options. Okay, so. Among the options, there was one particular university which was a little more expensive than the other universities. So others were asking me, why are you doing this? You'll get the same certificate even if you go to the, you know, uh, a little uh, cheaper university also. It's okay. You know, you, it's the same thing. Why do you only want to go to this particular university? But I can't explain to you, after the times of prayer, I just, even when I was clicking the names of the universities where I want to apply. While I was applying, I knew this is the thing. This is the university I want to go to. right? And uh, the funniest thing happened. I got an acceptance from all other universities except that one. And uh, you know, my family and people were like, oh, don't feel bad. I know you, you know, uh, God has better plans for you, this and that. So I was like, no, 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 just wait, just wait. And it was so beautiful just before the time closes, right? They, they give you a time to uh, give your statement of purpose and all that. So I had just enough time. And all of a sudden, this university also sent me an offer letter. And they said, would you like to join this university? And I was like, I told you, <laughs> this is the place that you know God has for me. And now I'm going to go there. But the way you come to that place of knowing is you really have to journey with God. Okay, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, word is there. Many, uh, you know, general things we can find out from the word of God. But when it comes to these specifics, how to know if it is God's will or not. And I would also say, you know, God gave me many confirmations also. That's how I knew that this is going to happen no matter what. And I prayed for that and it actually worked out. So... In this way, first thing to do is to figure out what is God's will for me. So first you figure it out, then you, you know, go ahead and do all your asking and, uh, you know, uh, uh, speaking it in the name of Jesus and all. It'll happen. But it's important for us to first recognize the will of God. Okay, I think we understood. Um, you know, this third point. So pray according to God's revealed will. Revealed will. Where do you find God's revealed will? YouTube? <laughs> where do we find God's revealed will? The word of God. So you have to go to the Bible. And in addition to that, the Holy Spirit. Right? The work of the Holy Spirit. Great. Next. Next. 
pray with a strong desire pray with a strong desire there are some scriptures here and we will uh, go through them mark 11:24 okay so whatever things you ask when you pray believe that you receive them and you will have them so you first of all need to come to a place of wanting something in order for you to ask if you don't want it then why do you why would you ask so there is a determination and a will isn't it that i want this god so whatever things you want you, know, you you believe you ask for it and god will give it to you there are uh, other passages that okay we'll we'll just read it matthew 15:28 okay so a mother who is asking for you know the deliverance of her child uh, jesus applauds that woman right and what was the desire of that woman healing of her child right wholeness of her child so that was her desire so there is a will there is a desire for something and when we approach god with that desire he does it for us okay and that's the same case i think last uh, few sessions we talked about um, that um, canaanite woman also with the great faith she came to jesus she had a desire and that desire was my child has to be delivered so have a strong desire what do you want is it healing in your in your body healing in your mind uh, what is it that you want you want success in your work you want um, god's grace to increase in your ministry you want financial favor from god um, you know what do you want first of all we have to be specific okay so be specific on what exactly your needs are now again people say how can you be specific we don't know what god's will is go back to the previous point that i'm that we talked about first understand what the revealed will of god is then you will have a strong desire okay and there are you know many examples you know so, uh, i don't know if you've read the book the fourth dimension okay, by uh, yongi cho he writes about how he prayed to god so specifically he even used to tell god god i want a cycle i want this model this color like this and then you know the story goes that he was in he was only praying about it and a lady came and you know uh, she felt god led her to contribute towards that cycle he actually got that very cycle so he says that you need to know what you want and then you need to have the strong desire to ask god for it and say god i want it i need it if you don't help me then you know how will i do it so have a strong desire be specific and have a strong desire and the same a testimony of yongi cho uh, he also shares about how when he prayed god gave him you know some number in his mind something like you know at different points in his ministry god gave him different numbers in his mind once god gave him i think it was 3000 okay 3000 i know 300 uh, but in his church there were only some three people and he used to pray with a strong desire he had something like a tent uh, so he would go around the tent and pray 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 and say god you told me that you know there'll be whatever three uh, 300 people and i think later when he prayed once he got 300 god put 3000 in his mind and then he started praying for 3000 there'll be 3000 people in this church and it increased to 3000 so he talks about how when you establish what god wants you to do you can kind of go after it with a very strong desire and say god you said in your word this is what it is and i'm praying you know i i need to see this happen let your kingdom come so you can be very specific and i remember this thing about strong desire um and you know it will also tie into the next point which is to believe and have 
a conviction that you know god is actually going to do it for us okay so let me jump to the next point then i think you know we've understood right praying with a strong desire so we can only pray with a strong desire if we have established the revealed will of god okay uh, and we more or less like we've come to a specific request and we are saying god i have to see this move and i'm just going to start praying about this and i know you're going to make a way and that is why sometimes it helps to have prayer points because what are those prayer points you've come to that place of understanding this is what god wants for me so i need to pray this through till it happens next pray with faith believing that you have received what you prayed i know i skipped two scriptures there but you know you could go back and uh, read it yourselves pray with faith believing that you have received what you prayed for just now you know we saw in mark 11 24 itself the same scripture whatever things you ask for believe that you receive right then you will have them so what is one is you're asking second is you have to believe so earlier what was told that we should not doubt in our hearts how can we come to the place where we don't doubt tell me hmm okay we know god's nature okay see god when he gives us a promise okay uh you call it a promise in the case of abraham or as i've been saying revealed will of god so even i went after the word i spent time you know praying um, and having the work of the holy spirit in my life so i have come to a place where i kind of know you know this is what god wants for me or this is the promise which god has made for me made to me then it actually becomes easier because what has happened in the journey of recognizing that promise or recognizing you know what is god's revealed will is your doubts will actually kind of go away you get what i'm saying so having no doubts sometimes it's not an event sometimes it's a process okay for example healing by the stripes of jesus i'm healed uh for me also you could you could say this like coming from a science background sometimes i used, i used to really wonder do these supernatural things happen you know how can you prove it with with evidence how can you uh you know so you have all these questions oh yeah they say this but maybe you can explain it uh, scientifically in some other so i had my own doubts about whether the supernatural like healing and um you know miracles whether they are real or not but studying the word of god right over a long period of time and understanding that something like healing is in the atonement when we talk about jesus and the cross that very easily we are able to receive forgiveness oh jesus died for your sins repent be baptized okay we are able to receive forgiveness so easily because we have understood that the cross means my forgiveness but when you study the word you also recognize the cross means my healing okay so what's happening the more you spend time in the word of god personally for me in this area of healing it's been a journey with a lot of questions doubts confusion you are coming to a place of faith where at some point because now i got a hold of the will of god it's easier to pray so when i'm praying for somebody's healing i'm you know it's not like are you sure do you think you know this is something god has provided for there's no doubt because there are so many scriptures that talk about god as our healer he wants to see us well in our physical body in our soul right in every area of our lives so 
while establishing the will of god sometimes we make a journey and you know those doubts are removed okay that's when we are able to pray a believing prayer because we've come to believe it now that i know that this is what god wants and i'm going to pray it through in the name of jesus so that is how we can pray a prayer of believing matthew 21 22 can somebody read that scripture also please okay so all the things that you ask for in prayer believing you will receive so first step before receiving is believing we have to believe and james 1 says he he who asks for wisdom let him not doubt if he doubts and he will not receive it so what is faith faith is you know doubt removed but as i told you it can happen in a moment we can believe in a moment for example salvation for most of us it was you know even though it could have taken a couple of days or a journey when we heard the gospel preached we just believed how did you believe did you work on it did you read uh, you know lot of scriptures did you research before you said to yes to jesus not really for most of us it's not like that for most of us it's like okay we heard the salvation message there was a call invitation we responded right so sometimes faith is like that in a moment okay and there's also something known as the gift of faith and god gives the gift of faith in moments things happen we don't have to go through the entire process of receiving the faith but the normal route is faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god so is spending time in god's word building our faith okay then as james says let him not doubt our doubts go away then when we ask believing without doubts what happens we receive it okay even when it comes to the prayer of faith remember we studied that in the kinds of prayers prayer of faith if anyone sick among you let him call for the elders what should they do they'll come anoint with oil the prayer of faith will heal the sick faith is very important to receive from god without faith it is impossible to receive from god so when we are talking about asking and receiving what is in between believing so believe and you will have it believe that you receive it and you will have it right so we have to come to a place of faith in uh, what god wants us to have so what is faith faith is like a conviction it's like an inner certainty you know, like how i just said i know i know is not a presumptuous no you know sometimes we can be presumptuous meaning we uh, don't think properly just randomly we say i know that's not the faith we are talking about real faith is a conviction based on the word of god empowered by the spirit of god so coming from god and his empowering you no know, we are able to believe that yes this will happen Okay, so uh, just two thousand twenty one, yeah, twenty one. So after the lockdown, you all know all the institutions closed down their physical classes, uh, and similarly here we had a batch which was uh, running in March twenty twenty two. But abruptly, you know, the message came: COVID is spreading. Please, uh, all educational institutions have to be closed. So then we had to send our students back home. so they all went back uh but you know by god's grace there was this idea of completing their subjects online so we did it via zoom we continued the classes we finished the classes for them and in 2021 right pastor had written a mail to us and said okay you know now what we are going to do is 
we are going to have classes <coughs> opened up to international students. Okay, and he had mentioned the number of countries. He had mentioned that uh, oh, uh, I want all of us staff believe with me, and he had put a number there, something like two hundred countries or something. That we should have students from so many countries. The first time I saw that mail, I was like. Are you serious? You know, uh, because we went from closing our physical classes, and in our classes we generally have you know Indian students from inside. But I'm sure you know God has given him that uh, request in his mind. This is what prayer of asking and receiving. So he had written to us saying, "This is what we are going to open it up to international students." And uh, it's going to be launched on uh, on this date. IT team is working on this, 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 something and all. And uh, believe with me, I am praying for so many countries. Uh, join me, prayer of agreement in doing it. I'm sure he already came from a place of faith, okay? And he was clear that these many countries, so specific. And so I was like, wow, this is the prayer of asking and believing. So okay, I also prayed about it. I felt like okay. I have a reference to this. I can resonate with this prayer request. Let me also pray. So, the amazing thing is, I think I don't know the exact numbers, but whatever number Pastor quoted there, we had at least the first time people enrolled. You know, we had people from those many and more number of countries, and it was amazing to see that. You know, why would People who are sitting in, and I remember in that batch, we had people from New Zealand, we had people from Australia, we had people from, you know, um, uh, Canada. Uh, some of them are still continuing. Some of them are still in our third year batch. Now they are in the third year batch. Uh, but I could have, like, I could have never come up with a prayer request like, oh, we thought, you know, we are sitting at home and just managing our existing students, but we are going international. Okay. You know, but this is how God works. And how do you go from a place of not having faith to having faith, and then receiving the answer to that prayer? Right. So you know, when you see examples like this, uh, I just shared with you about Yonggi Cho, how he prayed for his church, and every time it seems God would give him a number, pray for three hundred, pray for three thousand, pray, and he would pray, and he'll touch that number. He'll ask God, okay, God, what's the next number? What's the next number? So we have to journey with God firstly to a place of faith. Then, when you ask, believing, you will receive it. But don't condemn yourself if you don't have the faith at get go. Okay, no problem. Faith will come. How will it come? What's the source? The Word of God. Feed on the word of God. When you begin to feed on the word of God, faith will build up. Once faith builds up, you know, then you pray, things will start to happen, right? So, this is how you know God works, and God works. You know, so in in certain things, it's very specific. Uh, you you could just ask God for very specific things, and you receive the answer. For it and everyone around will be like, how did it happen? It is possible. It's a prayer of asking and receiving. We can receive if we are asking in the will of God. So if you believe, uh, you will receive. And as far as we are concerned, you know, when we pray a prayer of faith, it's done, isn't it? When we pray a prayer of faith, it is actually done because God is the one who initiated that. Request, in a sense, and uh, we are convinced that God wants to do it. We are just doing our part of, you know, praying, releasing the authority. We are co-laboring with God. Remember, and within us, we know, hey, it's a matter of time. It's already done. God is going to open this door. God is going to make things happen. Okay, so one more thing which uh, we want to add to this is, or maybe two things, faith 
is not passive sometimes what happens we ask god and uh, we just you know don't do anything after that you say or god told me he is going to do this and um, you know if it's going to happen it will happen god will make it happen i don't have to do anything about it but you see even in the book of james he talks about faith with works faith and works so what is co laboring co laboring is okay let's imagine you know you have a roommate and you cook in your hostel okay thankfully that's not the case right now but if you were to cook in your hostel and you tell your friend hey you make the roti i'll make the sabji okay and your friend makes the roti you don't make the sabji what will happen how will that ex dinner experience be not very pleasant it's incomplete in the same way you know sometimes we say faith 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 god you said you do it you do it god is like yeah but don't you think you should also do what you need to be doing for example let's say you know my church needs to have 300 people i am praying yes but i have to preach the word i have to see the power of god demonstrated in people's lives i have to build them up in the faith i have to care for the people i have to go to outreaches there's a lot of hard work overnight it's not going to just like you know crop up i have to do my part god will do his part so based on the faith i take the action if i really believe that my church is going to grow i'm working hard to see it happen so faith is not passive so we say oh okay god has a ministry for me uh, in the arts uh, 10 years from now what are you doing about it now isn't it are you building your skills are you disciplining yourself to spend more time with with your art work how are you using that as an outreach how are you so there are so many things you can do right now with your anointing with your skill with the grace the equipping which god has given you 10 years down the line will come promise will be fulfilled isaac will be born <laughs> don't worry about that god will do it but you got to do what you got to do now and faith is action faith is not like god will do i'll take a nap no no we have to co labor co labor with god do your part god will do his part one of the other ways in which we are actually using our faith is through speaking okay through speaking how do we uh, how does this work you see in mark 11 uh, um, 20 23 24 that particular passage when jesus made that statement you know whatever you ask you know you believe uh, and you will have it he was actually sharing some deep truths about you know faith and releasing that faith there is a fig tree you know, that jesus spoke to and the fig tree dried up okay the next day the disciples noticed the fig tree that's when he gave them that lesson and he said that you know uh, you should work with your faith because what did the faith of jesus do the fig tree obeyed the command of jesus he cursed the fig tree and it dried up but how did jesus release his faith the words which he spoke so he cursed the fig tree it says and then he told his believers you can even speak to the mountain so what is this speaking to the mountain releasing our faith so somehow i told you right that we live there is this whole spiritual dynamics why is it that our words have so much of weight and authority we don't know but what the scriptures encourage us to do is if you have faith you got to speak it out so even abraham abraham uh, romans chapter 4 you know we see there against all odds abraham believed god and all and then you go on to see he gave glory to god when did he give glory to god while he was waiting so giving glory to god or just saying god thank you 
you are going to bless me with this ministry god thank you you have already met all my needs because you are jehovah jaira god thank you you know because um, you know you have uh, provided for my needs through a new job god is showing you his will and once you know that even when you are praying you can release words of faith and say i know that it's done so god i'm thanking you instead of saying what why is it not happening i can't believe god you're taking so long what's what are these words these words are showing that i'm actually not believing because whatever i believe whether i like it or not it just comes out of my mouth okay so the words that we speak our declaration is a way of releasing our faith so speak words of faith when you come to that place in your heart where you say no this is it this god's word is true speak words of faith just say okay healing is in the atonement he sent his word he healed my diseases by the stripes of jesus i am healed what am i doing my faith is being released through my words okay so that is the way in which faith is demonstrated faith definitely involves action and it must also be released through declaration now point 6 here this shows us that one must persevere with faith okay so we have uh, the example um, here of um, a friend uh, right in luke 11 where a friend comes and you know he says give me something to eat like in the night just because he was persistent the neighbor gave him you know, something to eat and luke 18 is a woman who goes up to uh, the ruler and she asks for favor because she was coming again and again he's a wicked ruler he yields to her persistence so jesus taught a lesson from there and said even if unwilling people can respond because of persistence think about this how much more god who is willing so there's a contrast god is not unwilling if you ask for what is in his plan for you he won't be like oh, okay you know ask harder i won't give it to you god doesn't do things like that he's so willing he's saying i want to give it to you i was just waiting for you to ask so when we ask in the will of god we receive it but there are some prayers as we discussed earlier maybe it's not the right timing maybe uh you know it it is uh, there are other factors in it like for example we pray for revival right we pray for revival in our nation why hasn't it happened you know there are some prayers like this maybe there are many other components to it where we are praying we are pursuing and we are moving towards it so there are certain prayers which take time it doesn't mean those prayers are a failure but we need to persist okay so persistence is not nagging god is already willing to do his will for us but there are prayers which we need to be persistent about and that only shows our um you know confidence in god when we keep asking for the same things finally continue with thanksgiving so philippians says you know make your request known to god with thanksgiving so i asked god and like abraham i begin to thank god and say god thank you remember that's what jesus said when he stood in front of lazarus tomb he said god i thank you because you hear me so even the prayer of asking and receiving we conclude with thanksgiving so we give thanks to god all right so some questions here quickly which i will look at uh, one question is if i have prayed and asked once for something is it correct if i keep on asking god for the same thing over and over again so again it depends on how you have asked if you have followed what we just talked about if you have asked in the 
according to the revealed will of God in the name of Jesus. Um, and, uh, you know, you have uh, stood in faith, you've asked believing. Then the kind of prayer that you would pray, even in persistence, is a prayer of thanksgiving. God, I thank you. You know, you've done it, you've done it. So it really depends. If you have not yet come to that place of faith, believing God, uh, then yes, you have to still persist because you you yourself are not yet believing. Okay, but if you have prayed a prayer of faith, then your prayer of persistence is more like thanksgiving till you see the manifestation of that prayer. So it's not about right or wrong. Can I pray for the same request? You know, many times it depends on how you've prayed, what you are praying for, and all that. But praying with unbelief repeatedly, that is not correct. Even if you pray many days, <coughs> that is of no use. Okay, so pray a prayer of faith. Sometimes you can just pray a prayer of faith and it's that's done. Okay, you don't really have to repeat it over and over again. Okay, so does God always give whatever we ask? Remember? We, we said, we clarified that, Matthew 21, 22, whatever you, uh, you know, desire, whatever you ask, believing you shall receive, that whatever simply means according to the revealed will of God. So if you ask amiss, obviously we will not receive it. What if I do not know God's will about a matter? So if we don't know God's will about a matter, as we said earlier, it is our responsibility to search it out. Okay, so study the word. Try to find out what is God's will. That is the first one. Now, after having done that, if you're still in a place where you're confused, you're like, I have no idea. No. There are these two options in front of me. Both look equally good. I feel like the Holy Spirit is giving me witness for both of these, then use what we learned earlier. It's called the prayer of consecration. You say, God, I just surrender. I yield to you. You do what is best for me. You just open the right door for me. So surrender would be the way to respond if we are still unclear about a matter. Okay. So yes. Uh, How should we ask for God's confirmation? We can just say, God, you know, help me, show me, reveal to me, and uh, you know, I'm sure God will respond. Sometimes when we speak what we want in faith, the devil tries to create obstacles, how to overcome that. So that will always be there. You see, we, we know that uh, the devil is that enemy who comes against us, right? So what we studied just now, persistence, don't give up. Even if the enemy is trying to distract us, don't give up. Okay, I'll just take a question. We have uh, two minutes left. So go ahead. Yeah, sure. So uh, we we need to focus and we have to take responsibility, right? Personally to focus on, um, you know, whatever it is that, that is the right thing to do, okay, uh, regarding that matter. All right. So, uh, okay, good. So uh, I think, you know, we've got the key points. Okay, one last question. Let's accommodate it. Yeah, so uh, see, if you have uh, deep desire and strong faith, but faith will come from that place of knowing the will of God, right? Isn't it? So this is more like it's not faith. You're saying if it's not God's will and you still want it, right? So 
I wouldn't call that faith. Okay, it's just your inclination, like you you really want it. So I would say that you continue to pray about that matter, continue to seek counsel, till you come to a place where you can certainly say that God is leading me in this way. That's why I'm going, right? Uh, so you need to make that journey. There's no other, you know. There's no detour. Okay, so I hope it helps. We can talk more later, maybe. All right, yeah. Thank you, thank you, everyone, for your engagement. We shall uh, just uh, pray and close. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of learning. We pray that Lord, you'll continue to minister to us, Lord, through your Word and by your Holy Spirit. We commit ourselves to you in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So see you all. Bye. Uh, bye to the online students as well. Uh, next month, uh, we will have our assignments. So uh, please keep that in mind. Okay. Bye for now.